welcome to everyone taking time out of their day to join me for Tuesday Tips with Taylor. Here at Always Best Care, we strive to provide solely non-medical care for our clients of the same quality we'd provide that care for a loved one. We often hear communication is key, but for those caring for someone living with a cognitive impairment, effective communication can be very difficult. As Alzheimer's progresses, the makeup of the brain can change drastically, causing the loss of speech and ability to understand language. Thankfully for us, communication isn't done just through verbal communication, but can also be done through tone of voice, attitude, facial expressions, and even body language. In the early stages of diagnosis, you may find that your loved one starts to have difficulty with word finding. They may need extra time to respond when asked questions or given instruction, and because of this, you may notice that they start withdrawing from social interactions. One of the best ways to help support your loved one in the early stages is simply by asking directly how you can help with communicating. Provide support when they seem to be struggling with their words and make sure to include them in any planning for their future care needs. As someone progresses to the middle stage of their journey with brain change, you may find that verbal communication becomes less frequent and nonverbal communication increases. Changes will occur gradually and may include loss of train of thought more often, using familiar words repeatedly, and inventing new descriptive words to describe objects. During this stage of the diagnosis, you want to make sure that when you are approaching somebody, you're approaching from the front, not from behind or from the side, and address your loved one by their name directly. Keep good eye contact and get on their level, whether that be kneeling in front of them or sitting beside them. You always want to make sure that you're in their line of sight as vision changes happen as the disease progresses. With verbal communication, make sure that you're paying attention to your tone of voice. If you notice any sudden behavioral changes or a decrease in verbal communication, you should always speak with your loved one's physician because there could be something more going on. In the late stages of diagnosis, the best way to communicate is often through the senses. Verbal communication for some will be lost at this point, so it's important to be creative and be able to adapt to the changes in your loved one's level of communication. Always keep in mind to meet your loved one in their moment. Don't argue if their reality is not your reality. You can offer soft textures like blankets or sweaters. Fidget blankets can also be a great tool if your loved one likes to have something in their hands often. And when communicating, you can use gestures like pointing and make sure that your movements are big enough for your loved one to see. Communication is all about being connected to one another, so understanding what you can and cannot change through the Alzheimer's journey will be your best tool for success. Using resources available through your local Alzheimer's Association chapter can keep you up to date on new strategies, scientific breakthroughs, and even new locations to join a support group if you need that. I want to wish all our family caregivers the best of luck, and of course, don't hesitate to connect with us for more support at home. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Always Best Care has been providing solely non-medical in-home care since 2009. If you're interested in learning more about our services or our assisted living selection services, please give us a call at 860-533-9343 or you can visit our website at www.abc centralct.com. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram too so that we can show you how better options for senior living are a priority.